Hello and welcome to the Computer Labs YouTube channel. So today we are looking at a reasonably inexpensive gaming PC build that is easily upgradable. So this video is easily the longest video I've done. I think it's about the half an hour mark. Uh, so I will try and speed up certain sections uh, to try and obviously keep the video as short as possible. But we'll slow it down when we get to certain points in the video that uh, are of interest and uh, that I need to explain. So we're going to start off with the case, which is a Cooler Master uh, Masterbox Lite 3.1 with a Perspex side panel. So I really like this type of case. Um, uh, not only does it let you uh, look into the case and um, fault find if you need to do, but it also, obviously, if you're into RGB lighting or LED lighting, uh, you can add them at a later date. There's nothing on this board that's built in with the uh, built-in lighting. Some other boards have lighting uh, built in uh, to the PC uh, motherboard, so you can see it through the case, uh, and it has a nice effect, especially into if you're into streaming and you have it in the background or something like that. Uh, so we'll take the Perspex case off. Um, this does have some uh, plastic um, on the top of it, as you can see there, uh, which you can peel off later. I won't peel it off yet. Uh, so it just looks a bit uh, murky at the moment. But that's only purely because of the protective film that's uh, on the uh, Perspex. Okay, so this is the case. And as you can see inside, um, it has a cardboard box with some bits in that allow you to change the colour uh, of the uh, red flashing that you can see on the case on the top and bottom of the front. That's in the cardboard box I'm just unclipping now. So uh, obviously if you're doing a similar build or the same build, you need to take uh, the tie wraps off and get rid of these, uh, get these bits out of the case. So yeah, like I said, inside this box is uh, the clip-on add-ons for this particular case. Uh, and it allows you to change from the red uh, to white or to black. Uh, and they just clip on and off. Um, there's one that goes on the bottom of the front of the case and there's one that goes on at the top near the USB and headphone breakout. So you can see there, that's the white clip uh, for the top. So if you wanted to change it and didn't, have one, didn't like the red, then you can either change it to all black or change it to white flashing. So I'll put them to one side. Uh, also in the case, you do have the um, you know, the bits and pieces so obviously just get rid of the tie wraps, but you can see there, uh, right in the middle of the case is the cables for the breakout, which connects the uh, top uh, front outside connectors uh, to the motherboard. So you see the connectors there, the, the biggest one is the USB free. So on the top front there on the outside, you can see you've got USB, you've got your headphone, uh, you've got your microphone, a power switch and a reset switch, and all them will be needed in, uh, to be connected uh, at a later date once we get the motherboard in. Um, obviously once you get the motherboard in you can then connect them up inside and, and test it all at a later date. I will come into detail a bit later on uh, once we get a bit further into the video. So obviously just familiarise yourself with them, just check them over, just make sure that you're familiar with uh, the type of connector they are. Also in the case comes uh, some other bits and pieces so you get some tie wraps to tidy up the cables later on once you get uh, your cables connected up to the motherboard. You also get some uh, standoff screws and some uh, standard screws for connecting the motherboard to the case, um, which again will come into detail once we get the motherboard connected up, uh, once we get the motherboard mounted into the Cooler Master case. Okay, so we'll just put that uh, the case to one side for a minute and we shall get the motherboard out. So I'm using a Asus Prime B450M-K in this particular build. Uh, the reason why I've used that one, uh, there were certain things that the client wanted um, that um, this board supplied. I usually tend to try and go for uh, one a bit with a bit more bling, so maybe some built-in RGB lights or something like that. This one doesn't have that. Usually it has the usual error lights um, that you would expect to see on most modern motherboards. Um, but like I said, it doesn't have any RGB lighting built in. Uh, well, that's not to say that you can't add it at a later date. So again, once if you're using the same motherboard uh, or any motherboard, make sure you get all the bits out of the box and familiarise yourself with the uh, bits and pieces that come with your particular uh, motherboard that you're going to use for building the PC. So the usual stuff. 
manual, uh, motherboard, driver, disc. Uh, some manufacturers are better at producing the manuals than others, and Asus are usually uh, quite thorough and detailed, or you can download uh, the drivers and stuff and the manuals off the web. Okay, so this that I'm showing you now, that's the M.2 uh, plastic anchor that we, will, we need to attach later on. That's the uh, back plate um, that they'll need to go in first, so that, once I've shown the motherboard, that will be going in first, that goes in the back plate, it needs to go in the right way, and also needs to make sure that we put that in first, otherwise we'll have to disconnect everything uh, if we put that in at a later date. There's the main motherboard in an anti-static bag, and also uh, some SATA cables, uh, again, just a couple in there. Uh, and if you're using a separate CD or DVD drive, you will need to be using them. Uh, there are, I'm not actually putting a DVD drive into this particular build. So I'll just try and get the case into a better position so you can see uh, when I mount this uh, back plate uh, into the Cooler Master case. Uh, I'll just try and put it on something just so you can see it a bit easier. Um, I would also like to add, I do have an anti-static strap on. It is uh, around my uh, leg at the moment. Obviously, you normally wear it on your wrist, uh, but so it didn't get in the way of the camera. I've just got it around my leg, so I don't affect the motherboard. Okay, so this is the uh, cover plate. It uh, separates the motherboard from the outside world uh, for inserting your keyboard and mouse and USBs and things like that. So to make sure you get it the right way around, obviously just get your motherboard. Check it up against that so you can visualize it going in. Uh, then you can clip in the back plate. And literally do, there's no screws attached. They all do exactly the same fittings. They just push in um, onto the ribs that are preformed on the chrome plate. So I'll make sure it's all tight and snugly fitted into the Cooler Master case, which all looks good there. I'm happy with that. Um, so make sure that's all pushed in. Um, inside the case, uh, you can see all the different mounting screws there for the different type of motherboard. So I'm not going to mount the standoff screws onto the Cool Master case yet because I'm going to mount the components onto the motherboard before we uh, start to place things inside the case. So this is the motherboard uh, out of its anti-static bag. Uh, and we're gonna put the processor in that socket there, just indicates when we film it first. Uh, so we need to obviously get this case out of the way so we can see what we're doing, and then we'll get the motherboard into the center so we can see it a little bit, uh, a little bit better when we put the processor in. Okay, so for this particular build, I am using a AMD. Uh, the actual spec is an AMD Ryzen 5 2400G, which includes the Vega graphics chip. So that was uh, important with this particular build uh, because we were working on a budget, so we want to be able to play games. It's never gonna play anything in 4K, uh, but it will play most of the things uh, reasonably well uh, by just turning a few of the, uh, maybe some of the qualities down. But uh, it does play quite smoothly and quite happily uh, along with most modern games. Uh, it's just not gonna break any records uh, for that. And also that's the reason why I bought this particular motherboard. So it can be upgraded at a later date and it's got the option that you can use and put in a separate graphics card. Okay, so again, this is a um, standard stock AMD fa um, fan. Uh, for the CPU, which is perfectly fine for this build. Uh, really nice, uh, quite a nice fan actually from AMD. And even when you overclock this chip, which you can do if you want, if you want to do, uh, I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video. I'm just going to show you how to get it all up and running. Uh, but you can play around and overclock the processor uh, if you require. Uh, and the fan, uh, the ones that have overclocked, uh, the fan can keep up. Uh, Again, if you're wanting uh, to upgrade, you could upgrade it and, and install a separate uh, processor fan. But we're going to soon use the standard one. So getting the processor out of the uh, plastic packet. And you can see, here's the processor. Make sure you're aware of where the small gold diamond shape is because that is what you need to match up on the motherboard so you can see on the top right we've just been laid a picture there showing you how it mounts but you basically line up the small triangle with the triangle gold triangle on the processor so once you're aware of both of these where they actually mount then you can go ahead and start to position your processor 
on your motherboard. So a little spring clip there, again just uh, lift that out of the way, it just pops up out of the way. Place your processor nice and gently down, just rock it back and forward, make sure it's uh, located as you expect it to be, and then a little spring clip, push that down and click it in place, and that holds the pins and processor in place on its socket. So the next thing is to uh, mount the uh, CPU fan. Uh, you need to make sure that that's nice and clean uh, on the bottom of the fan. You can see I'm pointing there to the heatsink uh, compound that comes um, pre-installed on the stock fan. So you just make sure there's no dirt that's landed on that. Don't wipe it or anything. Just make sure there's nothing that's in there that's going to that's stuck while you've been building uh, onto the paste. So just familiarize yourself with mounting the fan. This particular fan has a different type of mounting. There's two different types for this particular processor. Um, this particular one requires us to take the side clips off, which you can see me just unscrewing there. There's two black plastic clips. Um, so depending on, again, which AMD processor you're using, it might use a different mounting method. But undo these uh, four plastic clips, and there's a metal plate, which I'll just let drop off because I, I want to show you it goes onto the back. Now, uh, see, there's the back plate. So that's already pre-installed on the motherboard, and you need to make sure that that lines up with the holes on the motherboard when we go to fit the um, CPU cooling fan. So these small screws screw into that back plate that we need to put onto the back of the motherboard to allow us to mount the fan. So just line the holes back up if it's dropped out, because um, they usually are quite loose. They don't usually stay in. And make sure it, uh, the hole the spigots stick through the motherboard and now we can start looking at mounting the fan and also this is a good time to uh, make yourself aware where the actual header is that connects the fan to the motherboard so position it sort of in a place and get a rough idea how you're going to mount the cable now I'm going to mount this fan in a particular way because I want to show you an error that is usually done so I will have to take this fan off again um, later on in the build uh, but I'm going to screw it on which I've done a hundred times but you will see um, in a second I will show you once it's in position um, there's a where the actual this particular fan this AMD fan um, there is two RAM slots and AMD I've put a small bit of plastic with the words AMD on the top of the fan that has caught me out a couple of times so you end up mounting the fan like I've shown you here and then you go to put the RAM in and it doesn't actually fit in the slot so like I said I'll be taking this one back off to clean it but I just want to show you when it's mounted so you think you're all good you've got the power cable connected to the motherboard uh, again like I said check your manual to find out where that is uh, and you can see the fan there uh, in place all looks good but I'm just indicating there to the RAM slots. So what happens here is you uh, go to put the RAM in and it fouls on the plastic where the power comes out of the fan. So do not put the fan in in the same orientation I have here if you've got a similar board. Um, like I said, this has caught me out a couple of times uh, depending on the board manufacturer, uh, purely because I've not put the RAM in first just to check how the fan lines up. You can see that it's very tight, um, can't quite see down at 90 degrees. So we'll get the uh, RAM out. I'm using uh, eight gigs of RAM. I'm using a Corsair Vengeance two times four gigabytes DDR4-3200 uh, RAM. So you see that as I'm indicating, because of that small black lump that's on the fan, the actual RAM will not go in uh, and it is angled. So the processor CPU fan has to come off again so I can get this in. So I've spun the fan round off camera and now we're back in action. So you can see there the RAM is still tight uh, but it does just about go in in place uh, with the CPU uh, cooler fan and the RAM in position. So we are good to go. Uh, like I said the gap is tight as I'm indicating there. So it's just something to be aware of. You might not have that problem if you're using a different motherboard um, because obviously if it's a different motherboard the RAM might be slightly different position but they are usually uh, quite tight has caught me out several times um, I suppose the trick would be to put the RAM in first but um, I usually always put the processor in first uh, so it's just a case of just visualizing where that goes so I've had to reposition my uh, CPU fan on the motherboard so now I can get my power cable back in uh, clicked on it to the motherboard uh, the, onto the correct header um, for the power supply to go to the processor fan 
And again, you can tidy the cable up if you so wish uh, with the cable ties that came with the case or if there's some that's come with your motherboard. Uh, just be careful, obviously, you're clipping it to the side of the fan. Um, you, you don't foul the actual fan itself. Uh, but I'm just going to leave mine loose just to keep this video moving along. Of course, the next thing I want to do is mount the SSD, the M.2 drive. Uh, again, for this particular build, I am using a Corsair MP300, uh, 240 gigabyte Corsair M.2 drive. And this is a solid state drive that mounts directly into the M.2 slot. Again, that was another reason why I spec'd this particular motherboard because I needed the M.2 drive. I'm only using 240 gig because the customer doesn't really need um, a massive storage. You can see I'm just indicating with the red box that's where it mounts on this particular board. But yeah, the customer doesn't need a massive storage. Uh, 240 gig is more than enough. Um, and at a later date, we can add a separate hard drive if we wanted to to increase storage. Usually with the gaming uh, computers, usually run an SSD drive with then a, a standard hard drive connected with the uh, SATA cable. And that's sort of a standard setup that most gamers use. Uh, so use that, the old sort of style hard drive to store your games on and then run your OS, uh, your operating system, if that's Linux or Windows, um, run that off the solid state drive so it boots really quickly. And also, you know, if you get a reasonably sized one, you can mount a few games on there as well, uh, install a few games on there as well. So this is the Corsair MP300 uh, M.2 drive, and now we're going to mount that onto the motherboard. Again, if you're using a different motherboard, you need to just have a look, see where yours is, and see how it mounts, and just familiarise yourself on your mounting holes. M.2 drives they're different, can be different lengths, so you can see these sort of um, three different holes on this particular board. Um, that mount the actual drive to the slot. Uh, this particular one is gonna to go to the end slot. So I need to obviously just familiarize yourself with that before you start getting the uh, mounting clip. Some boards have a small screw with a standoff screw sat behind them. Uh, the Asus ones tend to have a small little plastic riser that clicks into the board um, and then clicks in to the M.2 drive. So. I will just get this, uh, the plastic mounting, like little pop screw that um, you can see there. And that goes on to the motherboard M.2 anchor, Asus calls it. So uh, we're going to get this um, little standoff anchor clicked onto the board uh, and then we can mount the drive. Really quick and easy to mount onto the motherboard. Um, so like I said, some have a little screw. I mean, they're just as easy anyway because you put the standoff screw in first, put your M.2 SSD drive into the slot, lower it down, and then just put a, another screw into the standoff one. This particular one, like I said, this Asus one, it's a little plastic sort of pop it screw. It just pops onto the board and you just push it through the hole uh, and it uh, sits through with two legs that come out the back uh, so it can't come back out. You can pull it out if you need to do uh, with a pair of long nose tweezers um, or something like that. So now you've got it in position, you need to just put the M.2 drive in. I'm just trying to hold it to the camera so you can see. Just goes in at a slight angle first, uh, about 45 degrees angle. And then once you get it down and pushed into this uh, copper connector, you can then click the top of the SSD anchor into position. So I'm just trying to hold it to the camera here so you can see what's going on um, as it goes down. But just out of view there, unfortunately. But when it's in position, you'll be able to see. So it has a little pull tag, so you can quickly um, disconnect the drive if you want to do. So that, I wasn't just quite happy with the position, the way the loop sat, because it was the front of it was sort of sat on another slot. So I'm just positioning it there just so you can um, get to the little pull string, a little pull cord on it, a bit easier, and it's out of the way of them at two other slots. Okay, so that's it in position, and that's the SSD drive installed as we want it to be. Nice, neat and tidy, and in its slot. So now all the components are installed on our motherboard, we need to start thinking about how that's going to go into the uh, PC case, um, the Cooler Master case. So just offer it up so you're just familiar on you can just how it's going to go and how you're going to uh, put it in. Some boards are a bit tighter than others, so sometimes you have to wiggle them around a bit and uh, get them into position. So just offer it up so you can see where it's going. 
Next thing is to find the mounting hole. So I touched on these right at the beginning. I'm just pointing to different ones there. But you need to sort of match these up to your motherboard. Different motherboards have them in different places, uh, depending on what type of board you have gone for. So standard sort of board sizes, uh, there's micro ATX, there's mini ATX, there's standard ATX, there's also flex ATX. You can see there this case will uh, accommodate micro ATX and mini ATX. Um, indicated by the M and the I on the different screw holes. So if you're using this same case, then you just need to make sure that your motherboard is the correct size, and then you can start mounting the standoff screws. So I'm using a small nut runner, a magnetic nut runner, and the standoff screws look like that picture I'm just brought up on the screen there. So this, uh, you can use pliers if you haven't got a nut runner, uh, it just takes you a bit longer, or a small spanner, or a small socket. But it's just a bit quicker with this nut runner that I use because uh, you can just offer it down to the screw hole and then screw them in place. So I'm just getting it into camera so you can see we have the shadow on it. So I've just screwed that one in there. And like, like I say, if you offer your board up and just keep putting it in, you can match the holes on your board to the screw holes on your case. So you can see there, I'm just showing you where they actually are on the motherboard, the two that I have got in. So one's going there and the other one's going there but there is multiples around the case that I need to screw in. So I'm showing you another one there. And as you go around the board, you can see the particular mounting holes. Just make sure that they're all in place. Once you've got them all in place, then put the motherboard into the case and then screw the small uh, screws that came with the case into the standoff screws. Uh, and it should be all in position as I have shown there. I've not shown me screwing it in because really it's just screwing a board onto some standoff screws. Okay, so next thing is the power supply, which I am using a, it's a Corsair VS 450 watt. Uh, this particular one was a refurbished one from Scan, and um, obviously it's new, it's just refurbished, that's why it was in a brown box. So once you've got your power supply in the right orientation, and you've got it pushed up to the back of the case, there should be four screws that uh, either come with the power supply or possibly came in your uh, cases um, in the little bag of screws uh, that came with the case. So you screw the obviously power supply in, make sure it's nice and secure, and then you need to start thinking about how you're going to connect the power supply. So this particular board uh, requires two different types of power to the board. It requires a 24 pin EATX uh, power connector and an 8 pin EATX um, 12 volt power connector as well. I'm going to feed these through the um, back plate. So I need to remove the back cover from the motherboard on to feed them through. Uh, so it just keeps the front of the case uh, tidy and the cables will be hidden uh, behind the plate that separates the motherboard from this back plate I'm removing now. So I'll just remove that uh, and then I'll show you the two cables that need to go through. Uh, like I said, the one's the 24 pin, one's the eight pin. Um, depending on what type of power supply you have or what type of board, this might be slightly different. But if you're using the same one, then feed them through the hole um, and then you need to come back through so you can connect the relevant cables. So I'm just positioning the 24 pin one first. Make sure that you've got a nice firm hold when you're clicking these in uh, and also make sure your board is nice and secure uh, on that back plate, which it should be if you've got all the relevant screws in. So find the uh, right orientation, and you can see I'm just struggling a bit, just getting the pin in. If you are struggling a bit, you can just uh, check, make sure that um, the clip that holds it in position, there is a small clip on the front of the actual power cable that clips over a little lip uh, once it goes in. And you can also check that they are a different shape, so you can't get it in the wrong way. It has to only go in one way around. So. Once you've got it clipped onto the board, then just try and wiggle the cable a bit to get it nice and tidy. Don't want it stretchy on this side, it really wants to be tie wrapped in at um, a later date. But you can see that looks, it will look nice and tidy when I get the back plate back on. Uh, and now I need to connect the 8 pin one. So find the relevant end on your power loom that comes out of your power supply. Um, this particular build will not require any more power apart from these two that I'm putting in. Like I say, if you're putting a DVD or a CD drive or an extra hard drive, then you will need to use some of these extra power cable looms uh, for them, uh, them particular bits and pieces or components that you're adding to your machine. Uh, so get the eight pin one, feed it through the bottom, 
back through the top loop um, and then get this in the correct orientation. I'm just going to speed up a bit here as I mess around with the cable, just getting it in the right position. And I'm going to click it uh, in. I was just struggling just getting that one while holding it at an angle. So I'm just tidying up and clicking everything in position. But there it is clicked onto, uh, it's just in the top left hand corner there. Uh, just in the shadow you can't quite see it but that's the 8 pin one connected I think the main thing from this is make sure all the cables uh, that you need are tidied up because that's what will make the difference when you put your Perspex case back on so this loom that I have left over these uh, extra uh, power cables I'm just going to connect them uh, all together with a tie wrap or a cable tidy whatever you've got to hand uh, and I'm going to push them in the small um, hard drive holder that's on this particular case like I say if you're using a different case um, you might have to strap it to the bottom of the case um, but it's a it's a, a way of just trying to keep everything tidy so I'm just pushing it in out of the way into the little um, sort of riser that holds hard drives um, so they're out of the way and tucked out of the way so now I'm going to start and connect the uh, USB breakout that's on the top of the case and I'm also going to connect the headphone uh, audio jack um, and microphone jack and I'm also going to connect the power switch reset switch and the hard drive LED uh, just on a side note if your connectors are um, just black or don't show any indication of what plus and minus is then the little arrows I'm showing there uh, is the usually the one that's positive or the red cable is usually the positive so I can't get the camera in close enough, so I'm going to have to connect off camera, but the USB one just clicks in, which is the central one there. The one on the left is the audio, again just clicks in in a certain position, you can't get them. The only ones that are a bit tricky is the power switch, which is the ones on the right. Uh, they're the little individual ones, there's power switch, uh, reset switch and your hard drive light. Um, they're a bit fiddly connectors, some come with a mounting clip that you can pre-mount it and then click it in position, or some are individual like this particular board. Um, so you're just going to have to follow the instructions on the board there and just put them onto the right uh, little uh, standoff jumpers that come out for them particular switches. Okay, so now it's time to install Windows, which I'm installing on this machine, Windows 10. So I've started up here, but I've started it with a uh, wireless keyboard, so I need to swap it across to a wired keyboard uh, because the wireless keyboards don't usually work until you get uh, Windows installed with the correct drivers. So I've connected up a... PS2 keyboard, uh, yours might be a USB keyboard, but connect up the keyboard if it's USB or PS2, connect them into the uh, board, the back of the board, and then switch on. And then you should get some prompts on how to enter your BIOS for your particular manufacturer. If you're using Asus, then it is use the delete key. So I've missed pushing the delete key there, and it went straight away to try and boot into uh, the operating system, but obviously there's nothing installed yet. So I'll try it again, restart it again. Uh, keep my finger, you see them pushing on the delete key, uh, and this should then get us into the BIOS setup, uh, which you can see now. Uh, you might get a menu before that that said it needs to see set the defaults for the uh, processor because it recognizes that, so just push the relevant button and then get into your BIOS menu um, like I'm showing there. So everything's running okay in the actual case, uh, and this is the UEFI BIOS menu. So this is what they call the simplified version, they call the advanced mode, which used to be the sort of normal mode. And to get to the advanced mode, it's push F7. If you've got multiple drives on the right, it will show them there. You can pull them up and down if you've got a mouse attached. At the moment, it's just showing the MP300 SSD M.2 drive. So I'm going to push F7 and go into the menus here. And the one that you were looking for is the boot menu here. And a bit further down, there's one there on the third down, it says boot configuration. You go into there and you can select the boot configuration um, in there to set your particular drive that you're going to install. So I'll just exit out of this just for a second. I'm just going to uh, exit uh, with saving and then show you again that this menu that you will get. So now it can't see any windows. It's saying there's nothing there I can see. I can't boot into anything. So you need to then get windows. Now I've got my windows install on a USB uh, drive. So I'm going to use the top breakout. I'm just going to put it in the top of the case, the USB drive to install Windows. This has got the Windows installer on the USB. You might have yours on a CD, so you will need a CD drive for that. So I'm going to insert that into the USB and then switch the machine on. 
And what I'll do now I've got the USB drive in, I will just go back into the BIOS just to show you. So I'm pushing delete key here and I'll just go into the menu just to show you where you set the uh, boot drive. So now we have um, our USB thumb drive with the Windows 10 installer on it. We can then change um, the drive. So now you notice you have um, a couple of different drives that it is now showing up as. Um, and you need to pick, depending on how you're installing Windows, you need to select the uh, installer as the first boot drive. So that's the first thing that the computer will see uh, when it switches on. So um, you can change them in this um, easy mode, as they call it. So you can flip that up and down and drag and drop them if you've got the mouse connected. So you make sure that your installer is the first one in that, that list. I'm going to do mine in the advance. So go down to the boot menu, and then you, in here you pick up which one you want to see. So this is the way the computer decides how it's going to boot. So the, the boot option one is the first uh, thing it sees and that needs to be Windows 10. So make sure your boot option one is the Windows 10 installer um, and your SSD drive is the second one. And then you can exit and make sure you save changes when exiting. Um, again, if it's a different board, it might have a different key to save the changes, but it should alert you if you want to when you try to push escape key to get out of the BIOS. And now we should get a prompt that says press any key to boot from CD. Uh, I know it's not a CD in my case, but it's still the same CD or DVD. So push the space bar. You might be loading from a CD or DVD. It's just uh, the uh, the way that Windows has always done it that even though it's on a USB stick. OK, so you push your space bar or any key on your keyboard uh, and we're now telling the computer we want to boot from the bootable drive. Uh, in our case, the Windows 10 installer that is on the USB stick. So you might just have to be a bit patient here. It might just take a minute or so uh, to load the um, Windows installer off the um, your particular media that you're coming from. Uh, it shouldn't take it too long. You should start seeing the spinning circle as you can see on the screen there. And then we should uh, start uh, getting the Windows prompts to do our different things to install. And the first thing you get is obviously the language to install, the keyboard layout. Uh, so pick up uh, your particular one if you're using UK, pick up UK if you're America, use the American one and so on. I'm using the keyboard so I'll just quickly flick through the uh, menus just to pick which one I want to install. So I'm using the United Kingdom layouts for keyboard and language etc. Click on next and then we want to click on install now. And then we'll get the setup is starting screen as you can see uh, now. Uh, and then we should get to the putting the key in it. So if you purchased or if you already have a key for Windows 10, this is where you put your key in. You can click on I don't have a key product key and it will still install. Uh, but obviously you will get the uh, Windows isn't activated once you get into the menus. So I've just blurred out the key here as I put the Windows 10 install key uh, for this particular machine in. So once you've either put your key in or Picked, I don't have a product key, you can then click in the bottom right hand corner and um, click on start or next and then get to the next menu. Um, the next menu is how we're going to install Windows. So we get two options um, on this. So I just need to accept the terms and conditions, which you can just see me there. I'm just showing you as I'm using a keyboard, not a mouse. But accept the terms and conditions and then we get uh, another option. We have all want to upgrade Windows. Um, doing all your settings etc but there's no windows on this currently or we do a custom install click on custom install it shows you the drive you've installed if you've only got one in like this particular machine has it will just show the one and we can just click next again and then let it go through the windows setup menu uh, this again takes a while because it's loading all the particular windows uh, information and the os uh, onto your new m.2 ssd drive so it's putting it all across from the stick onto there if you connected to the internet, it will go and look for updates as well. Uh, once it's done the updates and installed them, it will then restart your machine for you. And then you should be getting something like, so this next screen, uh, we should start seeing Windows install. If it boot, tries to boot to the same menus that you've uh, just been seeing, then you need to pull out your installer drive or change your boot um, drive priority round by using the delete key. Because um, sometimes the machine's not clever enough to know that you've just tried to install uh, Windows and you'd want it to now boot to Windows. So pull out your USB stick or pull out the media drive uh, and then let it boot on to uh, your Windows. If it boots in fine, no problem. You get this screen and then you can click on. I'm just going to use Express settings. You can look at them individually, but this is just getting down into the nitty gritty of Windows 10. So create an account for this PC. So give it a name. 
click on how you want to use Cortana and the different settings there and then let it go through the um, in the full or finalizing the install. So I've just speed this bit up um, just to get this video uh, wrapped up. So yours will take it five minutes or so, maybe a touch longer. But once that's done, you'll be presented into Windows 10. So that's it. That's how to build a uh, relatively cheap gaming PC from scratch using all the components as you can see. If you like the video, please do subscribe to my channel. Please hit the bell icon to be made aware of any new videos we're making. And please do give me any comments below. Any feedback is always appreciated. And also if you liked or disliked the video, that's always a welcome if you give us them comments and subscribe to my channel, The Computer Lab on YouTube. Thanks again for watching.